Hi, I'm Anthony with Action VFX, and today I'll be doing a guide to adding muscle flashes and ground hits. I'll be using concrete, debris, ground hits, bullet hole textures, gun smoke, bullet shells, and muzzle flashes from our library. Let's dive in. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and drop in a denoiser. Okay. Now that we got a denoiser, we're going to go ahead and just drag this over into an area that's more as gray as we can get. So that'll denoise the plate a little bit. So with this denoiser, we're able to hopefully get a better track. There won't be a lot of interference. So let's go ahead and drop down a camera tracker. So in here, we're going to go ahead and just choose the lens distortion to be unknown because we don't know what it is. And then we're going to hit track. Okay, now that that's done, let's go ahead and hit solve. After that, we're going to go ahead and delete unresolved. We're going to hit yes, and then we're going to delete rejected. We're going to go back here. We're going to update solve. Okay, so now we have a good point cloud. And this is going to build us a 3D scene that we can use to put down cards in the shot. So let's go ahead and start laying down cards. Okay, so what I'm going to do, go ahead and do is I'm going to go to the camera tracker where we actually see our little markers, and I'm going to go ahead and just scrub through, and I'm going to find the points that I want to start adding cards to and just plop them down. So we'll just kind of scrub through a little bit. And there's a spot here, so let's just say we want our bullet to hit here. So we're going to right-click on it and click on that point, right-click on it, hit Create, and then do a card. And then if you see over here, it just drops down a card in that place. So we're going to do that again, rinse and repeat. We have our three cards. Now what we want to do is we want to adjust the rotation. So we're going to rotate the cards negative 90 and X and then zero out the Y and Z. Okay, so now we just want to bring in a bullet hole texture. So let's go ahead and just load that up. Delete those. And we'll just go ahead and drop these in real quick. And we're going to select the scene. We're going to select the cards. We're going to hit Y. Drop them all in. And actually, um, I'm going to go ahead and just skip a little bit because I'm going to reorganize this a little bit more. We don't, I don't want this whole thing here. So I go, went ahead and just created a, a new empty scene and then I attached all my cards to that empty scene and then I'm just uh, in here I went ahead and just said create a camera and boom just drops me down a camera. So now that I have that in my scene we're going to go ahead and do a scan line render. We're going to go ahead and do connect that to the camera, connect that to the object slash scene and then we're going to take a look at what we have okay so here's what we got this is just all the texture pieces and we're gonna go ahead and scale these down and if we want to we can see what it looks like with on top of the scene so we can get a better idea of how big we need to scale these down so we're going to go ahead and scrub through the shot and then we're going to go ahead and scale this down. And then we're going to rotate this a little bit. Get it around. Actually, let's go into the 3D scene. If you hit tab, it'll just take us straight to the 3D scene. Now it's still a bit big, so what we want to do is we want to just, now that we've got it laid out here, we're going to go ahead and just keep scaling it down. These are eight. There we go. Um, okay. Slipping a little bit. So I'll go ahead and go fix that uh, in just a second. I just refined my um, 
track. All I did, I haven't really changed much, by the way. I just um, added a bit of an exposure and did a little bit of color correction. Then I went ahead and added a sharpen node and then just refined my track a little bit. Well, once I got a better track, I got a better um, solve. I was able to get a better point cloud, and that's what I needed. I kind of needed to find the ground a little bit more than it was before. So now what I did is I just adjusted my cards again and placed them in my scene a lot better. So now they're sitting more snug to the ground. Once that's established, let's go ahead and just add a grade. We're going to sit these in a little bit better. So one thing I like to do in here is I usually like to go in between my R, G, and B channel. And this is how I'm able to grade this a little bit closer to the actual color of the concrete. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to hit R for the red channel. And I'm going to go ahead and slowly start to pull this down. I'm going to go to my green channel and do the same thing with the green and the blue. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and disable this point cloud because I don't want to look at it anymore. And I'm going to kind of just pull back a little bit. Now we want the color not to be exactly 100% because technically when a bullet hits the ground and it reveals the concrete underneath, it's breaking away all the, the dirty version of that concrete and we see some clean version of the concrete. So I could sit here and dial it in more, but what I really want to do is I just want to make sure that it, it does stand out a little bit, but it's not obvious. Like clearly we don't want that. Um, and clearly and definitely we don't want something like this you know we do want it to be flushed a little bit yeah let's see what's that let's see what that okay cool so oh no let's raise this up a little bit i actually like that okay we're gonna go ahead and, and again rinse and repeat we're gonna go to the next one and we're gonna do it here Okay, so now that we have this sitting in here, we're going to go ahead and add the ground burst. Beautiful thing about Nuke is that we've already set our cards in here, and we want to put our ground hits exactly where um, these bullet hits are. So basically what we can do is we're going to go ahead and copy these, and we're going to paste them over here, and we're just going to move this over here because we're going to create a new scene. We're going to use this camera. So let's go ahead and create a new scene. We're going to select the scene, shift select these, hit Y, and then we're going to add our camera to the scene. We're going to do a new scan line render. We're going to attach that to the camera. We're going to attach this to the object. And then we're going to go ahead and click on these. So these are our cards. And as you can see, there's nothing on them. So we're going to go ahead and add stuff. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to kind of um, reset these scales. What we want to do is now we want to rotate these also. Let's just set everything to default. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring our ground burst in. So we're going to go ahead and Hit R for read. We're going to grab these. Now we just need to rotate them and place them and then possibly scale them up. So let's go to a frame that we would start to see them go off. Okay, so let's go to frame 47. And we're going to use this as our reference. This is how we're going to um, aim them towards the camera, scale them up, and better place them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now.
Okay, one thing to note right here is that these did not have alpha, so we're gonna go ahead and shuffle these in. If you notice it doesn't come with one, and that's okay, we can just go ahead and take a shuffle node and we're gonna take the red channel, and that's gonna be our alpha. And we can go ahead and add a grade, change this channel, and if you notice, we can just gain up So I'm adding a time offset for each one of these ground hits so that I can offset them and control when they hit the ground. A lot of this time right now is spent just kind of moving the cards around and placing them and rotating them to kind of sit within the scene better. And I'm just at this point scaling things up and seeing what's working and what's not working until I'm happy with it. Next, I'm gonna add a grade node and I'm just gonna kind of dial it in so that the smoke sits within the scene and in this environment better. Cool, now let's add a little bit of this um, ground breakup. So I went ahead and added one of them in and I'm going to show you how to do it with the other ones. But basically we want to add kind of this rubble that kicks up from the ground, uh, the concrete that's kind of exploding from the impact. And that's, that's the effect we want to go for. So let's go ahead and bring this in. And these concrete debris, uh, these are EXRs because they're 3D renders. These need to be time offset if you're not working in um, a frame range of a thousand. So on this tutorial, I'm working on a frame range of from one to a hundred. So I'm going to time offset it by a thousand frames. So we're just going to bring this down to a frame one. I'm going to go ahead and merge. I'm going to drop a transform node. Then I'm going to hold down the control button and click and drag and center my pivot. I'm going to go down the timeline and see where the actual impact starts from. I'm going to move the debris destruction in place. It's a bit big, so I'm going to scale it down. And then once again, I'm going to place it in the center. So now that we have these two elements layered together, we can move the cards around and better place them with the new effect from the base debris explosion. Now we'll add some muzzle flashes. So the first thing we want to do is we want to just kind of drop it. I like to know where I'm putting the muzzle flash, kind of like a little indicator. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop a roto paint. I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the shot. And I'm going to go to frame one, which we're on frame one. I'm just going to kind of scroll through. And I'm going to find every time that he pulls the trigger when this thing, when the slider kicks back. That's where I'm going to mark it. First, let's bring in a muzzle flash texture and then check to see if it has an alpha, which it does. And then we'll drop a transform node on it. Place this here. Rotate it. We're going to merge this on top. Just 
pretty quickly. Let's scale it down. Okay, let's merge the roto paint and the muzzle flash texture together. That way we can keep our visual representation of when the muzzle flash is supposed to go off. Here, we'll go ahead and place it right about here. Maybe we can go a little smaller. It doesn't need to be that huge. There we go. Get rid of that. Okay. And what we'll do is we will, pretty simple, let's just turn it on and off. So right here is where we want it to turn on. We'll go back a frame. We want it to be off, on, really low. and then off. Next, we're going to key our translate, our scale, and our rotate. To the next frame, so we'll jump forward, and we will key this to be, so we'll kick it on, go back one frame, kick it off, move forward a frame, lower it, Move forward one more frame, go zero. And then we'll just move this into place. We'll hide that. Um, and then rinse and repeat. All right, I'm just going to do this for the rest of them. Okay, cool. Now we're going to go ahead and drop in a, a glow. I use a Expo Glow. You can probably find that on Nukipedia. So we'll go to Expo Glow and then we will increase the intensity. Fall off. Let's go back and cool. Let's see what that looks like now. Now we need to add some interactive lighting. We're gonna add a roto node and we're gonna turn this on. So we're gonna kind of paint or draw around them a little bit. Cool, and then, whoop. We're gonna add a blur, raise it up a little bit. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna take this grade and uh, I, probably, I did that too fast. Okay, drop a grade node in, take the mask and plug it into the blur node. And now what we're gonna do is we're just going to mess with the gain and we're just gonna kind of bring up the levels onto the actor. And this goes by so quick. Um, so we're just gonna set a key here. And before, turn it off. And then after, turn it off. So once that's done, we just kind of move these over to the next one. And rinse and repeat. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this real quick. Okay, that's working. We can um, go ahead and, and fine tune. Like I said, we can always fine tune stuff like the roto 
shape and the you know the feathering yeah so that's looking pretty good I'm pretty happy about that especially when you throw all the elements together um, cool so for the gun smoke we're gonna go ahead and grab next we're gonna create a new scene and we're gonna take our camera that we um, got from our track earlier and we're gonna attach it to that scene once we're done with that, we're going to create a card and then we're going to attach a gun smoke element to that card. Afterwards, we're going to go into the 3D scene and then we're going to roughly place in, we're going to roughly place the card where the muzzle flash happens. Now we're going to drop in a retime node and what that'll do is that'll just speed up or slow down our element. Once we're done with that, we're going to drop down a time offset. And this will let us move our element in the timeline. Then we're going to drop in a grade node. And we're going to sample the background just to give us an idea. Now that we have our gun smoke dialed in, we'll go ahead and duplicate this network. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it four times. Since we have four gunshots going off so we built our initial setup for the gun smoke and moving forward all we have to do is just we move the cards into place per gunshot and we just dial in the grade node so we built everything now all we have to do is move it and grade it Once we quickly put together the first pass, we'll go over it with the second pass and we'll just dial in the grade nodes even more. Lastly, I'm going to bring in one of our free animated bullet shells. Alright, now let's drop in a time offset. And we're going to go ahead and drag that over to our frame 1. Drop a transform node down. And I'm going to merge it on top of our shot. I'm going to scale it in and then place it roughly where it comes out of the chamber. Right on now, let's, uh, yeah, let's set a key on the translate and the uh, rotate. And let's do it for the scale. I'm gonna jump a few frames ahead and then I'm gonna go ahead and just animate it shooting off the screen. Next, I'm gonna add a keyframe in between and just kind of lift it up, creating that arc. So we can go ahead and turn our motion blur on. I'm going to raise it up to eight samples and set that to 75. This shut it up 0.75. You know, I'm actually, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at 0.5. And I'm just going to go ahead and change the motion blur down to zero. And then we'll turn that back on to uh, five or eight when we're ready to render. Now that I built my, my first bullet shell, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this about three more times per muzzle flash. I'm gonna now merge them on top of each other. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add a transform no node to each one of these. I'm going to grab the motion blur from the master transform node, the first one, and I'm going to control click and drag it into each one of the transform nodes motion blur that way when i turn my motion blur on it'll just connect it'll turn all the other motion blur um on on all the other transform nodes that way i don't have to do it to all the transform nodes i just have to do it to the one cool now the last step is we just um repeat the same process that we did with the first bullet shell we're just going to go to the next muscle flash 
we're going to use our time offset to slide the animation over. And then all we're going to do is animate the translate, the rotate and the scaling uh, once we placed it into the chamber. And that's basically the whole process. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of skip ahead because it's the same thing that we did on the first one. So here's all our elements combined. Overall, it's a fairly simple process, but just a lot of repeated steps. Also keep in mind, there are more than one ways to skin a cat, as the old saying goes, but hopefully these basics help you along the way. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to leave a comment below to let us know what other new tutorials you'd like to see. I'm Anthony with Action VFX, and we'll see you on the next one.